to another exciting edition of the Love Power Show called Somebody, because we're on the air every Sunday from 2 to 3, 2, two, two to 3 on Sunday, screaming loud and sparing none. Call 327, area code 901-3400, or grab a line at 901-327-2500, where we discuss all of the relevant issues, everything from the sublime to the ridiculous, debating the issues, taking positions, defining and defending those positions, offering analysis, presenting solutions, providing leadership, and provoking thought. We have guests who are exciting, interesting, knowledgeable, fascinating, and again, thought-provoking. In the studio with us today, we have to my right, Jeffrey Steele, with a background in history and sociology. And to the right of Jeffrey Steele, Talu El Ami, with a large background and a ton of experience coming around the table. Lonnie Simmons, historical background. And next to Lonnie Simmons, Omar Baruti, insurance, housing, prison ministry, background in biology as well. And today we are continuing our talk critiquing this paper. We are on number 13 by Dr. Boyce Watkins. We have a caller on the line yet, Isaac. Not yet. He hasn't called yet. Hasn't called. Jerome Ewing, we will be talking with him about his book. And the title of his book is More Than Motown. We've been talking with him about it. Seems pretty interesting, so we may purchase a copy of that. But the Re Referral Center, Inc. is a fully licensed and it is your connection to real estate brokers in Tennessee, Arkansas, Mississippi, Georgia, and Alabama. If you are thinking of buying or selling a home or investing in real estate properties, call Betty Wyro, 901-323-8003, or give her a call at 901-758-5667. So until Jerome calls, a couple of sidebar notes, Omar. In the MSNBC, on the Melissa Harris Perry Show, Talib, they were talking about various events. So the one politician, female, called out the Democratic Party as well, just as she did the Republican Party, saying that they uh, have been overlooking issues particular to African Americans. That's what she said. So, I'm listening and I'm thinking that people have said to me why or they question why everything that I do and say, well, as far as public speaking goes, the forums, the conferences and the like, has to do with African Americans. And so that, to me, Omar, confirms what we do here on the Love Power Show. When we say that our issues are African American. That's our thing. Every Sunday, the people know what they're going to hear. They're going to hear something about African Americans and their condition. Americans and their condition. Is that right, Omar? Yes, sir. Can you, can you, can you help me out here? You know, I need help with that issue. <laughs> charity starts at home. Okay. You can't solve anybody's problem until you solve your own. Okay. So we're mm -hmm. working on a solution to our problem, but we're in such a deep mess mm -hmm. that it's going to take the rest mm -hmm. of us to solve it. Mm -hmm. So we ain't trying to solve nobody else's problem. Okay. Yet. Mm -hmm. It makes, it's just, that, that's, that's, Backward thinking, isn't it? Yeah. It makes absolutely no sense. No, it is no, not no. not borderline insanity. That is absolute totally insanity to, to be talking to about. Deep as death. Right. To be talking about love everybody. Listen, I'm not against loving others. Mm -hmm. We forgive you, turn the other cheek, and that kind of care. Mm -hmm. You see. But now, some of that stuff is problematic. Absolutely insane. Is that right? Okay, so I want to go to Lonnie and then you, Talu, and speak. here's another question. But if you want to speak to that African American issue, please do so. Lonnie, there was a there there was a woman, a with a promising future, African American woman, who was a 
accosted by the police, white supremacist police, and she was roughed up and she was defiant, according to the news report, having something to say about the way she was being handled. And she was locked up, incarcerated, and found dead in her cell. So let me ask you, does it seem like a person with, with this kind of potential would hang herself in a jail, a jail cell? Lonnie? You know, that's, that's one question I, I wanted to ask, you know, how, where did she get the material from to hang herself, you mm -hmm. know? And, you know, it, something just don't settle right, you know? We are we already dealing with these race issues, and then, you know, somebody has to be accountable for for her, um, for the, the, the protection of her. You know, even though she's cosplayed, but she's in somebody's custody. So for them not to know, and they're still, I mean, I guess, they're still wondering, I guess, what happened. I heard of they were going to do a thorough investigation or whatever. But you know how that always comes out, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. To me, it, it, it don't settle well. I, I mean, just a brief background of what I did read about her. It didn't fit the characteristics of her. I was going to hang it myself. Like, I wasn't there. I couldn't even say. But, I mean, of course, it's, it's something in my gut to tell mm -hmm. me something that works. Okay. I don't know what to say. Um, but back to the, the question about us um, always speaking on our issues, you know. Okay, let me ask you this. When, when you say we and us, you're specifically talking about African Americans. And, specifically. and I, I think that's important in the wake of all of this love for everybody and we forgive you and turn the other cheek. In the wake of all of that and the wake of all of these generalities, Right. These problematic words and phrases. I think it's it's important that we are specific, <coughs> specific about our presentation. But continue. Um, so let me clarify. Yes, please. Thank you. I believe it is important for us as African Americans to speak on our issues as as more often as possible. And I'm glad we do it every Sunday. I mean, that's the time that we're able to come collectively. Mm -hmm. But that should be our main focus as we have issues that um, we have to solve ourselves. We can't, we can't sit here and we analyze our history and we see the patterns. And then we expect uh, the enemies, whether they be European or any other nation that has done something to us in the, done something to the African uh, American community in the past and has not um, and, and we have not received uh, reciprocity from that. Mm -hmm. So we cannot expect them to seriously talk about our issues and then do something for us. Mm -hmm. uh, then that mean that that's almost giving them the power, saying that we don't have power period. So I mean I'm, I just I appreciate having the opportunity that come with brothers that seem like they're genuine uh, about the issue. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're really trying to come up with solutions together on, in, not only in our personal lives, but for the whole community, our African American community. So, okay. You know, All right. Talu, yeah. yeah. he, said, he said something about the investigation process. Mm -hmm. So, it is the police who are talking about doing a thorough investigation. So is that like, I've got a couple questions for you. Is that like calling on the Fox to investigate mm -hmm. a crime at the Hen House? Absolutely. Okay. You know, I, I, I'd like to say this, in prelude to the answer the question. Yes. Um, Chinese are normal. Mm -hmm. Africans are normal. Mm -hmm. Indians are normal. Caucasians are normal. Black Americans are not. We are not normal. Something is missing in us that calls all these other people to be normal and for us to be abnormal. 
we don't respond properly to things as a people would ordinarily. We turn to people who, Bobby, let me back up. What black Americans normally do is use Caucasian Americans as the criteria for all judgments, opinions, and views, and ideas. All of them, okay? We form no views, opinions, and ideas of our own. We have to respond. We, we have to, to use them as a means of judgment. Frederick Douglass warned us about that over a hundred and some years ago. He said, do not judge us by the standard of the white man. Judge us from which we come. Mm -hmm. Look at where we've come from and set the criteria. But don't put the Europeans or the Caucasian next to us and say, oh, you're not living up to the white man and what they're doing. That's where the abnormalcy comes in. Mm -hmm. Now, to answer your question about, yes. about the, the investigative system and all that stuff, you know, a, a, a colonized people have nothing else to go on. We're colonized, okay? We're colonized by the United States government. All of us think alike. All of us act alike across the United States of America. All of us have the same education. All of us have the same type of label as jobs and that type of thing. So the thing about it is we believe in the government. We believe in not, let me back up, not government. We believe in the agents of government, mm -hmm. the white man. We believe that the white man is going to do right. Why wouldn't we believe that? We believe that because there's a white man on most of our walls. We call him Jesus. And if you question us about that, 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 that image, that European image, the blonde hair, long blonde hair, or black hair, or, or the pale skin and the thin lip, if, if we question that, most of us get angry. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make any difference what color he is. Mm -hmm. You know, he's on my wall, and that's Jesus, and that's God. Mm -hmm. Okay? So why wouldn't we believe that the white man is innocent? Okay. Sounds like one. Here's what it sounds like. A great, a great extensive degree of indoctrination, and we're going to get to that on number 12 when we go back to Dr. Force's Watkins paper and continue to critique it. Jeffrey, Lonnie said, how important, he said something about historical patterns. I, I thought that was, that was great. I thought that, that was a, a great observation. And historical patterns, Talu just got through speaking, and what's, what I'm hear, hearing coming out is inaccuracy, lack of self-confidence, lack of the ability to depend on oneself and one's own confidence and capacity to do for oneself. So can you speak to historical, how important it is in terms of historical patterns and one's capacity to how one's own business in general terms for African Americans? Well, that, that is where, 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 we're, where we're at right now. We're, we're talking about the problems right now, but at, at some point, um, we're, we're gonna have to move towards um, acting out the solutions that we come, come um, that that we come up with. You see, the reason why history and pattern plays plays a part of this is, as uh, Brother Taluf was just talking about, and Brother Red, we were just talking about indoctrination and 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 uh, conditioning. Uh, uh, Brother Taluf said uh, we don't we don't respond the same way other groups of people respond. And, and you see, that's that's what we what we notice. We we have a history of people who have been very uh, um, brainwashed, um, brain, brainwashed, <laughs> scared, scared to scared, scared to react, <laughs> cowardly, uh, uh, um, a lack of organization. You know, uh, no resources. Mm -hmm. We well, see this is this is our experience through the history that we've been through. So it's not just because we're here, just because we're black. It's a reason why we're here. 
And the reason why we're here is because of this indoctrination, because of this conditioning, because of the programming, because of the educational system, because of, um, of, of us being put an uh, image in front of us uh, and, and telling us that that's God without us not really understanding what's going on, because they put that on us when we're very young. We see these pictures of, of, of white uh, uh, biblical characters and, and a, a biblical savior that's white that looks different than everybody in the church that we, we attend. <laughs> How crazy is that? <laughs> that's so, that's uh, yeah, yeah, it's true. Yes. So, um, so this is this is the historical background to this madness that we're caught up in now, and and this madness is us not responding to the issues the way that we should be, and and this is the result of the indoctrination that that we're going to talk about later on in the show. Sure, absolutely, Omar. The very first piece or comment in this paper, Dr. Boris Watkins talks about indoctrination from birth, indoctrination. Mm -hmm. And this is something we're going to have to critique, critique and break down. Now, number 12, is Jerome Muring on the phone yet, Isaac? Okay. Yeah, we're still calling you. Okay. Number 12, he says, believing that Africa is a poor, dirty, horrible place with nothing but poverty and disease, and that you should th thank your lucky stars you were blessed enough to live in America. Omar, how far does that, is that true? When you look at... Uh, in general terms of African America. When you look at the truth, uh, what, 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 you know, let's, let's think about this. Thing. Yes. When has this man ever told us the truth? Exactly. Ever, since he has been on the planet Earth. When has he ever told us the truth? Mm -hmm. When I was a child, my, I was indoctrinated. I thought the jungle in Africa was like jungle gyms mm -hmm. and Tarzan. Mm -hmm. White people came over there and we were wearing grass skirts. Mm -hmm. And he had to civilize us. And, and he could dominate us. Mm -hmm. And we were running around with monkeys and had bones in our nose. Never knowing that Africa was the cradle of civilization. Mm -hmm. But as a child, that's what I grew up thinking. Today is no different. When they show you a picture of Africa, they show you a picture of people who have distended stomachs. Flies all around their mouth, disease and destruction. They don't show you the cities of Africa. They look like New York City. Mm -hmm. The highways that are paved with transportation, just like traffic jams in, in Memphis and any other urban city you go to. Mm -hmm. They don't show you any of the airports where people are coming in and out just like they do JFK. They don't show you that. They show you in Africa so you won't want to go there. Mm -hmm. You won't want to trade there. You won't want a vacation there. They talk about London and its glory, but they don't talk about any of the glory of Africa. Mm -hmm. It's nothing but a brainwash. Mm -hmm. And what we are suffering in Africa is what we are suffering here. But you think about that. Johannesburg. You go to Johannesburg, in the black neighborhood, every 50 feet or so, there's a sign that said, suffer to the black woman by getting an abortion. Mm -hmm. There's a big billboard on the way to the airport. An abortion. And then a big billboard that said, if you get a hysterectomy, a full hysterectomy, then you get a $500 bonus mm -hmm. for getting one. Mm -hmm. Mr. Farrakhan was in Rhodesia. He said right now, there's an average of 5,000 people a week dying from HIV, from AIDS. That's what they're doing to Africa openly. That's what they're doing to us in America privately. Mm -hmm. Yes, it and is the, a brainwash. And, 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 and you, are you saying that this is coming from the media? Yes. And that much of it is subliminal. And therefore one must have the kind of insight to do what we do here to make the sublime clear. Let's, is it, let's look at that. Let's, break, it, let's, let's that. break into it a little bit more. Let's look at that rap I just put on the table. Yes. Let's call, Shall I, I read it? Yeah, read it. Please. It says, it says, OT Genesis lyrics. It says, hook by two, cola. I'm in love with the cocoa. I'm in love with the cocoa. I got it for the low look. I'm in love with the cocoa. It's, here it says verse 1. Hit my plug, that's my cholo, cause he got it for the low low. If you snitching, I go loco. Hit you with that trenta oco. Niggas thinking that I'm solo. 50 deep, they're like, oh no, 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 please no. Heard the feds taking photos, I know nothing, fuck the popo. Refrain, bacon soda, 
I got baking soda, baking soda, I got baking soda. Whip it through the glass, nigga. I'm blowing money fast, nigga. 36, that's a kilo. Need a brick. Miss my free throw. I'm in love just like the Neo. Busting shots now. He, Neo. Free my homies. Fuck the CO. Fuck the judge. Fuck my PO. All this coat like I'm Nino. Water whip like I'm Nemo. What does that say? This mirror got 60 million hits. 60 million hits. What is the message that Buster Rhymes is trying to give to the children? And the, 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 if you look at it, Buster Rhymes is being controlled by another media that's quite on. But it gives you a, a YouTube video of someone who's there making crack cocaine, and he's in love. And it's a nice lyric, but it's the wrong message. That's mm -hmm. why I said last week, it's our drum, but it's his message mm -hmm. that we're giving to our children. Mm -hmm. This is poison. Mm -hmm. F the po po. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is poison time. So it's, glor it's glamorizing and glorifying a drug, thug, gangster type life, which will eventually end up in jail or killed. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of brainwash we're suffering today. And our rappers, the ones that we look up to, our poison now, I wish, look, if we had our way, we would take that to the stages of America and beat the hell out of them mm -hmm. in okay. front of the children. Okay. Uh, all right, so, yeah, so that. Uh, Quite eloquent, and quite forceful, I, I would say, Lionel. Mm -hmm. Now, number 13, it says, and any one of you can come in on any one of these because you may see something that you want to add to it. Now, it's, number 13, he says, they're believing that Harvard and Yale are better than Spellman and Howard. And that piece we just read is just more of the insanity, I would say, uh, Lionel. And, and you see the contrast he's making here. That's right. Okay. It's, to me, it's, it's showing how we have uh, not fully understand the history, uh, especially of the, the school system that's been placed here. And, and we, we don't understand that all our education that is presented to us, especially in these public schools, um, it's, they all have the same format and it's, it's all, you can tell the intention behind it all. And I, I, I say this because, you know, all the history that they show in our public schools about uh, the African Americans. And the they, you're talking about the, the media. The, the media. Okay. And it only goes back to slavery. You know, every time. That's the origin of our story. Yes. And if we look at the time frame, you know, that's 400, a little over 400 years ago. But what about life prior to that? What about, what were we doing prior to that? And to me, across the board, the school system doesn't answer that. And it's a reason why they don't answer that. And it's a reason why you know, they stripped us from that knowledge and that identity, and now we today are going through the same identity um, crisis. i give you a sample. Okay, you know, we have all type of leaders in, in the black community, right? And the issue that I believe our young people are seeing, that me and Brother Jeffrey was talking about this this morning, is, you know, it's, it's just like the, it's just like you have a, a, a mother and father in a household full of uh, multiple children. Mm -hmm. And the children are always fighting and bickering amongst each other. And that's because the leaders of the house are fighting and bickering in front of the children. Mm -hmm. And then, then the, 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 the parents are trying to, you know, chastise the children for not doing what, you know, they should do or what. Uh, they were taught to do, but their examples of doing that is not there. And that's what I say that because we have all these leaders in our community, you know, and they're they're doing, they're telling us this is what we should do, this is what we should deny, we should do all this. But we don't see them uniting, you know, we, we see them uh, bickering over petty issues that causes someone that's not, you know, close in that circle, we'll look at them and say, oh, they're doing that well, we don't need they don't need us, you know, joining that. So, so, but all of that to say, you know, the, 
our educational and all all of that has strategically been placed there for us to um, not have a, a certain knowledge about ourselves that would change everything, you know, change our whole, because you know it starts with the mind first, right? So if I can change, if I can change that brainwashing, we're talking about brainwashing, mm -hmm. if I can somehow get a message to a young brother and flip that brainwashing switch, then his eyes will start opening and seeing, you know, it might not be in a day, but over a course of time, he will start seeing things, start waking up, he will start trying to reach out to other brothers, right? Um, but it's so much propaganda, like I said, through the media, through the textbooks that they um, throw out on us in the classroom, that until we have genuine leaders, and, and I, I have to take my hat off to the fair club right now, because okay. I, I hear the message and I see it, um, until we have those leaders right there, you know, this willing to die or whatever for that, you know, we're not going to, the leaders that the African people that we need, we're not going to be able to reach that goal that we, we are attaining to. If we don't have those leaders willing to die and people that's willing to stand and fight with them. Okay. You know? All right. Talud, he said quite a few, quite a few things mm -hmm. uh, in the yeah. course of yes, his, 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 his presentation there, yeah. even brought up family and husband and wife and leadership and the like. And talking about the bickering and the fighting and those kinds of carrying on and the children looking at that. Mm -hmm. That is problematic as well. We see some of this stuff played out mm -hmm. in our communities as well. And let me, and let me add one more question um, to, to you, Talu. He says that not realizing that both Spellman and Howard were founded by white people. Mm -hmm. Now that's saying a lot. That's saying something about some mm -hmm. other things too that we know about. Mm -hmm. So, Talu, tackle those two questions for us, if you will. Yeah, yes. Um, the, the thing about um, colonizing people, okay, programming, in other words, programming people to believe that everything that the superior people are about is correct. No question for any disagreement. Absolutely correct. The right thing to do is do as you're told and follow the program. And that's what 99.9% .9 of black Americans do. Okay. We, we, we have bought a bill of goods <laughs> in this United States of America. As you mentioned that as week. Mm -hmm. We've not done an inventory on nothing. We just accept. And this, the, the American uh, 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 social system is about capitalism. Capitalism is the primary focus of all American life. All of it. The capitalists want you to forget about your moral responsibility. Forget about right and wrong. Okay? Forget about your people. Forget about all of that. Get you some money. That's what the capitalists say. Go get you a high degree of education and join our corporation. Forget about these people. Get you a big car. Get you a big house. Get you some clothes. And go in debt. And big debt. Because we stay in debt. It's our whole life. Right. That's right. And die. Holiday to holiday. And, and die. Right. And pass that, that insanity on so, to the children. But what we're saying is this. Yes. Think about your people. Okay? Think about the bickering and argument that's going on in the family. Mm -hmm. Think about the violence that's in the family. Mm -hmm. And think about how those children are trained by the parent mm -hmm. about violence. They're getting beat to death in some of these houses. You know what I mean? In these homes. And when they get out in the street, they start relating with each other. They practice violence on each other. Yes. Then, when they become adolescents or teenagers, they practice violence on society. Mm -hmm. We we can stop that. Yes. We can stop that by by realizing that that's a perpetuation, generation after generation, of violence. Okay. And 
back to education. Mm -hmm. A misconception of education. See, the, 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 the superior people in the corporations, they tell us this. If you don't get an education, a good education, you're going to die in poverty. You won't have anything. You won't be successful. As if, though, there is no God. Like, God has nothing to do with this. This between me, the corporation, and you, the laborer. You understand? Yes. God, God does not set the fates for your life. We do. And we have to get back to what's natural. Get into natural meaning that your life is in your hands. Not the corporate bosses. Not the capitalists. It's in your hands. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat>